um, think about you guys. If you could attend any musical artist concert, who would you choose? We had a few responses in the chat. And you had Beyonce, you had A Boogie, you had Juice World, mm -hmm. you had Selena. Thank you. All right, so now let's go over our objectives. Okay. So uh, that's what we saw with. Sorry? The SW's part is supposed to be so with development. Uh, students will. Okay. Students will develop an event flyer for their favorite slash dream concert. Students will prepare and design a document for print. Students will utilize their knowledge of Photoshop tools, styles, filters, and filters to alter, combine, and blend layers, images, effects, and text. Designers often combine different images, text, and tools to create designs for print such as flyers, business cards, and more. Skills, guides, rulers. All right, perfect. So um, we are gonna be designing our event flyer for our dream concert. I'm gonna go over a bunch of skills today. So, um, most of you guys I feel like you should know, but I'll teach you some new, new ones as well and kind of go through step-by-step step what you have to do and how to customize your design. All right, so um, before we continue, I just have a question for you guys. Looking at your screen, what's the difference between RGB and CMYK? Just take a guess. RGB is more clear than the CMYK. Mm -hmm. Yep. RGB is also brighter. Brighter, okay, good. So what's similar? What appears to be similar? Um, they have the same color pattern. Same color pattern, awesome. We had somebody in the chat. CMYK is dull, yes. So basically um, these are two different color modes. So when we have RGB, a design can be in RGB or in CMYK. So when we have RGB, the design has been optimized to be viewed on a screen. So you guys can see, okay, that's why you said the left is brighter and the colors are more vivid. When we have CMYK, a design is um, optimized for printing. Um, so the difference is, is when you're looking at your computer screen, your computer screen, it omits light. So um, when colors are projected from, from your screen, so you can see them, they're projected in red, green, and blue. And that's how we see colors on our screen. And the reason why it's red, green, and blue is um, we don't, the light coming from our computer screen makes, makes us able to see a whole range of full colors, right? So it, it gives us what we need to see on a screen. If we were to print on a, on a piece of paper, a paper doesn't glow light, so it has to be different. So when colors are printed on paper, they are printed with cyan, that's a C, magenta, which, which is like a, like a red, uh, sorry, like a pinky red, um, yellow, and K stands for black. So those are, when you buy like a color printer, those are the four colors of ink that you need to get. So because that's how um, something's printed, when we're designing a flyer to be printed, we need to make sure we're in the proper color mode. Um, does, that, does everybody kind of, does that make sense? Or if it doesn't drop a question or ask me to clarify in the chat. I'm gonna keep going. Um, okay, so how do I optimize designs for print? So Heaven, we can take turns um, reading the boxes pop up. Okay. You can just take it away for the first one. Adding in bleed allows designers to have images go right to the edge of the paper when printing, but ensures that important info doesn't get cut off. Perfect. So first step today when we make our design, I'm gonna show you guys how to make sure we add a bleed and um, margins so that when we're designing, we can add our pictures. So they go all the way to the edge, but when we're printing, we don't get that white border or any, and any um, 
key information cut off. So we see that margin and we wanna make sure, okay, all the text and important info goes inside. Um, next one. When we're designing for digital and web, designers use a color mode, like I told you guys, called RGB, red, green, and blue, because this is the way a computer screen displays color. When designing for print, an artist must also use the color mode a printer will output, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And go ahead, Evan. When printing a design, it is important to use a standard size of paper. Select the one from the sizes. Uh, select one from the sizes designs for print and Photoshop. Perfect. So, um, I'll show you guys. Actually, Creative Cloud makes it really easy. When you create a new document, it says, "Is this for web? Is this or is this for print?" So, and there's also more options. So, it'll give you some pre-customized sizes that you can actually select, and that way, it'll it it gives you the actual size that you need for paper. So, like. A4, it might say like your invitation size is like A3, A2, or A4. And that's how you're able to design within that size. Um, the last really key part is that it's important to use images and set up your document so that it is has a high DPI. So DPI stands for dots per inch. So um, when, it, when in a, a design is like designed for print, what happens is when it's going through the printer, the ink puts dots on your paper. So your di your high DPI, you wanna make sure you have at least 300 dots per inch. And I'll show you guys how to set that up in your document, but that ensures that when you're designed prints, it's gonna be crisp and clear. So um, always wanna do, if we're printing something, at least 300 DPI. Okay, Heaven, you can, take this slide. Project description. Close your eyes and imagine you are front row at the best concert of your life. For this project, your imagination is the, is the limit to come up with the NID, a design a concert event flyer for your dream. Perfect. So you guys are going to come up with your dream design. So like I told you guys, my dream concert that I would love to attend is actually the, the Houston Astrodome concert. Um, of Selena. So I decided to make my design based off of this. And I'm going to actually demonstrate how I made this step by step. So you guys can recreate um, this type of design, but kind of customize it and um, use the skills that you have to make it look the way that you want. And it's really important when you guys are designing this that you include your artist's name, you want to have your location, time, ticket information, and the date. So just make sure you have that key information. All right, you guys, so now I'm going to do a demo. Um, so what I'm going to, the slide didn't format properly. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up a document for print. I'm going to review smart objects, masks, type, and layer styles. And I'm going to review brushes and the layers adjustments panel. Um, so I do want to, I do want to like get into it and show you guys right away in case any of you have to hop off early, I'll do my demo and then I'm going to show you guys the criteria at the end. Okay. Um, so during the demo, I have a lot to show you guys. So this is kind of what my design looks like here. So now I'm going to walk through and do this with you guys. So I'm going to go file new. Oh, wait, you guys can't see my screen yet. Hold on. Share. Okay, so I'm gonna go file, new. And you guys can see in Creative Cloud, it'll say saved, photo, print, our illustration, web, mobile. So we're doing print. So for this design, you guys can choose which type of document you'd like. So there's a letter size, which is like you guys, a regular piece of printer paper, legal, which is a little bit longer, um, a tabloid, which is like a bigger um, kind of 
a little bit bigger than a printer size, but kind of like a smaller poster size. And then A4, which is um, a small invitation. So for mine, I'm gonna do letter size and I want it to be in a horizontal orientation. You can also do it long, okay? I want it to be 300 DPI and see how the automatic is RGB color. I wanna change it to CMYK. And now I'm going to create a new document. And just remember you guys, I am gonna show a whole bunch of different steps. You can always come and rewatch this video and do it along with me. So don't feel like you have to remember every little thing while I'm going over it. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna go to view proof setup, working CMYK. And it was selected already, but I just wanna make sure that it's selected because what that means is it's gonna show me, you guys remember how those colors were super dull on the, on the screen for RGB, um, or sorry, for um, CMYK. I wanna see the way it looks when it prints. So I put on um, the view for CMYK because we don't want it to, the last thing we want is work on this design and then have it print and be like, well, it's too dark, it doesn't look right. So we wanna make sure we're working in the right color mode. Okay, any questions? Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is add my margins. Okay, so for me, my rulers are already showing. For you guys, they might not be. So what I'm gonna do is go to view and rulers. And what happens is, um, actually the shortcuts also control R. You guys see how the rulers pop up? And in order to change the actual measurements, you can right click. I want them on inches. And I'm going to make some guides. So I will be adding one I'm gonna do 0.25 of an inch. And all I did to make the guide is just click from the ruler and drag down. Okay. Click, oops. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So this is going to allow us to create our margin. So when we're designing, we want to make sure pictures go outside of these margins, this bleed, but we don't put any text or anything out there because what's going to happen is that when we print it, it's going to run the risk of um, being cut off by the printer. Okay. You guys just please stop me if you have any questions as I'm going. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my photo. I think it's in my downloads folder. Here we go. So when I was looking for this, actually, hold on. When I was looking for this image, I made sure to do uh, find a high resolution image. So you guys, um, on Google, I'll show you real quick. Go to Google Images. Type in your musical artist and then go to tools, size, large. We wanna make sure we get something that is high quality and crisp. So this says 1200 by 1200, that's fine. Okay, so I found my picture. So going back to my document, I'm gonna go file and I'm going to place, you could do place embedded. Let's see how this looks once I place it. See how it's a little blurry? Oh, 
Okay, and then to place the image, we just go, okay. All right, that looks good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fill layer. So I'm gonna go layer, new, and or sorry, layer, and then new fill layer. So this is where you guys can get a little bit creative. You can decide what you want your design to look like. So for me, I'm gonna do a pattern. You could do a solid color, you could do a gradient. Um, I'm gonna show you a pattern. So this will pop up. I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm, so basically what I've done is I've made this background for my design with the pattern. Now there's a whole bunch. Texture fill. I think the one I used on my last one was this. And then I can adjust the scale to make it a little bit bigger. And then once I get it to what I look like, what I want it to look like, I can press OK. So you guys see now we can't see the Selena picture because it's below that layer. So I'm just going to drag the Selena above. So now what I'm going to do is my goal is to fade this image into the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a layer mask using a gradient. So I'm going to select the gradient tool, which is you press the letter G right here. And I'm going to go to gradients, make sure I'm on the black and white gradient here. And I'm going to do a layer mask, which is this little button down here. Add layer mask. And now what I can do is fade my image out just by doing a little click and drag. I can fade my image out into the background. And so just to kind of backtrack and go over how this works again, make sure you're on the gradient tool. Make sure you've selected on the gradient tool, you can also do it up here, the basic black to white gradient. Because the way masks work is um, black will remove and white will add. So when we do a fade from black to white in a gradient, it'll kind of erase some of that picture. Just let me know if you guys have any questions. Okay, so I wanted to adjust because Selena's favorite color was purple. I wanted to do a little bit of adjustment on the background pattern because you guys see in my design how I made the water look purple. Okay, so I'm going to click the layer and um, do a layer adjustment on the background. So I could do color balance, I'm going to turn up the magenta, turn up the red, and add some more blue. You guys see how the color changed? And then I can adjust the brightness and contrast. Okay, now I kind of got it to what I want it to be. So one thing that I didn't mention to you guys is when we add images to a design, it's really important that we use them as a smart object. So in um, Photoshop, it actually creates them automatically. Do you guys see this little icon right here? on top of the image, that means it's a smart object. So what that means is it's actually not destructing the image. So if I really wanted to, I could delete the gradient and it would go back to normal. So it means that it's non-destructive. So if we're not editing images as a smart object, as we edit them, the original disappears and it, and it leaves us. So it's really important that while we're working on stuff, we make sure we're using smart objects. And I believe Creative Cloud in Photoshop actually does it automatically for you. Okay, next step. I'm just making sure I have all my steps here.
We have a question. Okay, no worries, Evan. Try to pull my slides back up. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna show you guys is the text. So if we go to the type tool, we can do our name of our artist. And I actually downloaded a font to make that looks like Selena, the Selena font. And the one that I picked was this messy messy script. So just just how you guys would like download fonts um, for like your movie poster, that's the same thing that you can do. Okay, so now I can change the color of the font. And if I want to adjust the spacing between the letters, I can adjust the spacing in the character panel. Okay, I'm running out of time. Okay. Next, last, uh, one of the last things I want to show you guys, the, or, uh, the vertical type tool. So click and hold on the type tool here, vertical type tool. And we can put in the Astro, Astrodome. Can make this smaller. Okay. And I'm just going into the character panel to adjust how spaced out the letters are. I have my character panel easily accessed, um, accessed on the side here. If you guys don't have it, you can go to, um, I think window and then character right here. Okay, because we're running out of time, I'm going to speed up a little bit here. Okay, so one thing I did was I added a couple effects to the text, which I want to show you guys. And then I also added a rose. So I'm gonna make the font black here. Okay, and then file, place, add my rose. Okay, so for the Astrodome layer, I'm gonna to go to the layer with that has the um, text that I wanna make an effect on. And I'm going to go to layer and layer style. So for this one, I'm gonna try the bevel and emboss. Show you guys what it looks like. Bevel and emboss. Um, 
we can add a color to the emboss. The highlight will change what color is bright. You guys can kind of see how it makes like this blue light, blue light above. And then it's making this dark purple light below. And I can adjust it how I want if I want less of a shadow or more of a shadow. And for the address and the date, I can do the same thing, layer, layer style. I can do a drop shadow. Okay, and then one of the last things I did was I actually, um, you guys know how you can search fonts. There's actually like really cool fonts out there that are stars and um, different kinds of shapes and things. So I downloaded and installed a brush, um, a star brush, and I'll show you guys what it looks like here. That's too big. So I can add like a little sparkle effect. I like the look when they're really big. And then I can make it a little see through. Okay, so that's the overall demo for you guys. How do you delete a project you make on Photoshop? Mm. You can delete it from your actual computer. If you wanna delete it from Creative Cloud, delete it from your computer, delete the file, like move it to the trash. Okay, so finalized design will kind of look like this. Okay. So now let's go back to look at our criteria. So these are just some examples for you guys on what your design can look like. Remember, you can pick any musical artist that you'd like. All right, and um, so your criteria, if you guys are stuck, just go through, go back and watch the video and do it along with me in the video. Um, so what you guys have to do for your criteria is you're creating an event flyer of your favorite musical artist in, or band in JPEG, PDF or in CMYK format. So you can decide which file you'd like to upload to Google Classroom when you submit it, but make sure it's either JPEG or PDF because those are the optimized versions for printing. Make sure that you also have bleed guides so none of your key information on your design goes off the edge. Convert your layers to smart objects and demonstrate understanding of non-destructive editing. So that means when you're editing your image, make sure that you could technically go back and adjust it if you need to, and that it's working as a smart object in your document. Um, number three, include both horizontal and vertical text. Um, so I have horizontal for the name of the band and the information, and then vertical for the Astrodome. Number four, include at least two layer style or effects. So for me, I did the drop shadow and the outer glow and the emboss. So you guys see how the Astrodome is embossed, and then the rest of the text has that darker shadow. Um, number five, design at least one fill layer. So I use the kind of watery pattern. You guys can use a solid color or gradient or another pattern. And then number six, your event flyer must include all information, including the date, the band, the artist name, the cover charge, ticket cost, and address. And these are just some shortcuts for you guys as you're working on your um, event flyer. And then also just let you know that this is due next week on Thursday. So you guys have lots of time. Are there any questions? We've got about two minutes. How do you delete stuff on Photoshop? So if you're talking about when you're designing something, like let's say I, 
I add a new layer and I don't want this here, I just go control Z to go back. Um, you can also in the layers panel, just delete the layer. And all you do is select it and then press delete. Any questions or concerns? So I said it before, I don't know if you heard me, you delete the file on your computer and then it'll remove from Creative Cloud. Is that what you mean? Yeah, okay. Whoa. I'm gonna use a really big brush here and kind of fade this in. 